I'm going to do a makeup look that I think is going to be great if a bride happens to be doing their own makeup. Um, or even if you're a bridesmaid and you want to do your own makeup, this is just sort of some tips and tricks as well as just like a, an idea. You can really do whatever you want. It doesn't really have to be a bridal look for it to be appropriate in my opinion. Um, I think it should sort of match and fit with the flow of the outfit. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily lean in too much to like a color story because I think for the photos it would be nice if there was sort of almost like a uniformity to the to the look. So I think that the bridesmaids and the, you know, everybody in the bridal party should discuss like, you know, what everybody's going to do and almost not lean in. I don't think everybody needs to wear a red lip, but I think people should still look like their individual selves. So if you are, you do wear a red lip and somebody else doesn't, I don't think you should not wear a red lip because you should feel like yourself. Um because you are still you, even though you're there to support your friend, even if you are the bridesmaid and she's the bride, if that makes any sense. But <clears throat> I think that it's nice to sort of somewhat all feel like you're going to the same party. Is that, that's all I mean by that. So for a wedding day or for an event, I'm actually just going to turn off the light behind my mirror because I like more of a, um, less light here for the shadows. Anyway, uh, for a wedding day, I would say that, your only ingredient as far as skincare should be SPF. And so all this I'm gonna use is SPF. This is, um, let me just mess up my exposure slightly. This is Then I Met You um, SPF. It's nice and dewy. I don't hold it too much in the screen. And then I'm gonna apply this as my skin prep step. Focus on the forehead, focus on the top of the ears, shoulders, collarbones, anywhere where the skin is exposed, obviously is where this should go. Yes, you might be like, but what about bounce back? What about flush? I wouldn't, it's a, tr it's a tricky one because every, every SPF will do something different. And I think it's a mineral SPF that might bounce as opposed to a zinc SPF that bounces. I can't remember. I don't do weddings, so I don't prepare for that because it's not my area of expertise. But I would just say like, protect the areas that you know you're gonna get sun exposure more so than other areas and maybe wear a tiny tiny bit less than you normally would for the sake of not having a flashback or a bounce back in a photograph it's one day um but that said do you and don't take my advice if you think that advice is wrong i am never ever going to encourage you or try and encourage you not to protect your skin um and so take that snippet of information as you will um i think that sometimes yep there's a fine line with like you know what you <clears throat> what you do and what you know something that you do and something that might work um does that make any sense all right anyway i digress keep the skincare simple don't do too much under skincare under makeup unless you are insanely insanely dry and you know your skin is gonna basically just distress throughout the day if you feel like your skin is gonna sort of melt and products are just gonna fall down the face just do spf i'm putting on my do not disturb okay so back to the makeup so now that my skin is dewy and glowy, my eyebrows are on, I'm gonna do a little bit of foundation. I'm gonna do a foundation that I think would actually be really, really good for a wedding. There's a few. Armani Luminous Silk, amazing bridal foundation or wedding party foundation. I also think that the Glossier Stretch Fluid Foundation is an amazing foundation for that. Um, so I'm gonna use just like half a pump. I'm gonna prime it into a brush. I'm gonna prime it into a brush that I'm kind of sampling as a spectrum release uh, with them. And this is the shade Light 3. I'm actually more comfortable in Light 2, but um, I'm just gonna use Light 3 because it's all I've got on hand. What shade is this actually? I might have just lied. Light 3. Um, and I think this foundation is particularly good for a sort of, you know, event type thing because it's not super, super matte and it's not super, super shiny. It's somewhere in the middle. You can therefore then control what it's gonna do throughout the day with the foundation, with the base, with the skincare, or as well, you can control it with powders. So just always remember, whatever a foundation says it's gonna do, you can actually make it do something different based on what you put under it and based on what you put over it. So putting on a little bit of foundation. If your ears are exposed, please, please, please do the ears. It will look so much better. It just finishes a look. Obviously take your earrings out and don't do what I just did. Finishes a look, it makes the skin just look complete. Um, if the hands are exposed and they're a different color, put a little bit of body makeup on your hands. So that's your foundation step. It doesn't need to be too involved. It doesn't need to be too crazy. I'm gonna actually skip right ahead and do eyes. Cause I want the eyes to be, um, I wanna just like get through the eyes and get everything done and then go back in for foundation concealer later. For a wedding day or a long day, like when you when we're talking wedding, also we're talking just a little bit more makeup than you would typically use. It doesn't need to be heavy. It doesn't need to be cakey. It doesn't need to be thick. 
This applies to red carpet makeup as well. So red carpet makeup and wedding makeup are actually very much of, this, of a similar thing because they're both highly photographed events. So um, I'm going to use cream shadows. I think cream shadows um, as a base are great for just sort of getting your, you know, makeup on, making it last a long time, making it pop and contrast. This is the Nabla Amira shade of the Sh Arrow Shine eyeshadow. Um, and I'm going to blend it in with a Spectrum KJH number 15. And I'm blending in the edge as opposed to right at the lash line. If I blend right at that lash line, I'm taking more of it off than what, maybe what I want to take off. And so that's kind of my first step to eye makeup. Simple, easy, just go along the lash line. If you want it to be more lifted on the outer corner, then focus on the product being more on the outer corner than across the length of the lash. I'm just gonna do a simple, standard, classic, beautiful, elegant, nothing too trend focused, nothing too sort of descriptive of an era, nothing too connected to an era or a time and then you're going to blend it in i did sort of kiss the eyelash line with my brush just then so i'm going to go back in and apply some more just to re-enhance and i think it's a pretty kind of color to start with because it's a little bit romantic it's a little bit dreamy um i think if you do want to go a little bit pinky on the eye or a little bit more berry on the eye depending on your skin tone just go more plummy if you have a deeper complexion and more sort of light if you have a fairer complexion more like peachy pink if you've got a fairer complexion all right I hadn't planned any of these steps. This is just me fully riffing, by the way. Now I'm going to take a little pointy, fluffy uh, brush that I actually sometimes use for concealer, but I'm going to use it for eyeshadow. And there is a palette on my desk that is from Sydney Grace and Kendra Matthews, and it's called the Bridal Palette. And it's got a bunch of different beautiful pinks, browns, a black, a few shimmers, unveiled Sydney Grace and Kendra Matthews. So I'm actually going to take a shade that I feel like suits what I've got going on right now which is gonna be called Honeymoon Phase. Actually, I'm gonna do Maid of Honor, this one. And I'm just gonna dip my brush in it and I'm dipping my brush on this front, not all the way around. So that's important to know because if you dip all the way around and then, you know, basically the placement of the powder on the brush will impact how it applies to your face. I'm using this brush as a flat right now as opposed to in the point. Like if I hold my brush like this, I get a sort of pressed on impact. If I hold my brush like that, I'm getting a pointy blended impact. So I'm pricking up with one side of the brush, not the tip. Um, and so just, you really need to, I think it's important to learn how to use your brushes because that really helps you sort of figure out, you know, how product's going to apply and therefore what kind of shape you're going to create. Um, it's hard to sometimes know what to talk about as far as tips and tricks because you just don't know what people already don't know. Um, and so you just don't want things to be redundant. All right, so now to move on to another shade, I'm just going to color switch by using my towel. I have plenty of brushes to use, but when I'm in a pinch and I'm in a groove and I'm in a flow and I like this shape and size of a brush, I like to just color switch and use that same brush size. Now I'm going to pick up with the point of this brush in this shade Unity. It's like a mid-toned mushroomy brown. I'm going to take that one and I'm going to go right in here for me. This is what I would do to add a little bit of drama. It's a subtle shade. It's not a crazy contrasting shade, but I'm doing it in there because I want a little bit of a smoky, sort of sexy smoldering look, but I don't want it to be black or dark. So um, I want it to be like a soft, airy color. This is reflective of my complexion. So if you are of a deeper complexion, then you will go more rich in the tone, of course. Um, all right, so... I'm going to take a little bit of that also on the tip of that brush and go underneath the lash line. Just create a soft, dreamy, smoky eye. And I'm probably going to merge it into that pink that I did up top. Okay. I think start, starting with creams and ending with powders for any makeup where you want longevity, I'm going to bring a little up here now. Wherever you want longevity is always a good idea. It's a good method. Um, I'm doing my eye open here. Me blending with my eye open is helping me make sure that I can still see the shadow when my eye is open. If I close my eye entirely, I'm not going to be able to see where any of this product goes um, or where it's going to settle. Okay, so blending this in, the same brown color, just gentle. Also, don't pull. If you've got crepey eyelids, don't pull or push the product around too furiously or too firmly with the brush, because if you do, you're actually gonna create more crepiness in the skin and therefore get creases in the eyeshadow. So just a soft, flickery, or you can just sort of tauten the skin a little bit, but I would also get into the practice of sort of just trying to get in between all of those folds 
the areas that are giving you an issue. Okay, so now I've got this brush, which is clean. It's got nothing on it. It's a number 10 KJH Spectrum. I'm going to use this just to sort of refine that edge because I don't want that edge to come out too far. And I'm going to move on to a little bit of contour next. I don't like to sort of complete one step of anything. I like to gradually build and gradually add. I'm going to use a grayish toned contour product, um, the Danessa Myricks one. Uh, this is the shade Fair number one of the contour. And I'm going to go right in there where I've naturally got a shadow that's kind of peeking out at me when I talk. Tip of the nose and then under the jaw. So I'm going to a few just sort of places that will appear darker in a photography situation if their lighting is correct. So I'm sort of just playing with tricks of light right now. Like when you consider photography and makeup, you're really just enhancing the shadows that are naturally there. And if you wanna create new shadows that aren't there, you literally just create them. If I want that contour mark to be higher up, I'll literally just go up here, for example. So I'll just go up there and you can see it getting a little bit higher. You want it to be very subtle. You don't want it to be too much product at all. Um, and you do want a contour shade to be more of a cool tone typically than a warm tone because a warm tone is more of a bronzing shade, which you could also apply with this face. But if you're trying to create shadows, shadows typically don't have warmth to them. They have sh like coolness to them because they're a shadow. Um, and that's what contouring is. I'm doing a little bit up here just to sort of shorten my forehead, but I don't really need to, nor do, nor do I care to shorten my forehead. I don't care to really change my face with makeup. I just care to enhance what I naturally have. And I think that's kind of a nice ethos to live by. All right, I'm going to do a bit of blush again. I don't sort of really plan. I just sort of go. I know that I want to use Blush Please from MAC, which is one of my OG favorites in the Glow Play, Blush Glow Play. Yeah, Glow Play range. I'm going to go a little higher up, up here, close to the eye and border the eye with this. These are the most gorgeous sort of creamy, they're a slurry, they're like a pressed, start as a cream and then they get pressed probably by some sort of, actually these probably don't because they're domed. I don't know how these are made actually. Um, I'd be interested to see these being made in a factory because normally a slurry texture, something like this, that has a sponginess to it. They're made, they're like, it's like a liquid that comes out of a nozzle and it goes into the fill line and then it gets pressed. If it's an eyeshadow, um, like a Urban Decay, um, Urban Decay Space Cowboy is a slurry. Um, basically means wet tech technology. Um, it starts wet and then it becomes kind of like a powder. But this stays more wet than, this, than the typical slurry. So I don't know. I mean, I think this is a slurry, but I might be wrong. But I would love to know how they make this. So taking the eye taking the blush close to the eye is a really good idea because it helps to give you this, like, you know, it reacts to the eye color and the shadow and the stuff that you've got going on. I don't want to go too nude for my lip. I want my lip to have, like, a color to it and a fleshiness to it. So I'm going to go for number four from Nabla. And I'm also not going to do too much of a big shape. I'm going to just keep it simple. And I'm going to go just there on the top lip. And I need a mirror for this. I'm going to go down here on the bottom. And just sort of fill out my pout that way. Then I'm going to take a color from Chanel, which is currently one of my favorites. I think it only came in the mail two days ago and it's already one of my favorites. It's called Cool, Keep Cool Rouge Cocoa Balm. And I actually don't know whether I think this goes with this lip liner, but what I love about it is it's just got this sheeny quality, which I love. Actually, it's nice. You just gotta blend them together. So that's gonna be my lip. I'll keep everything to one side and then I'm probably gonna go in and boost more things a little bit later. So now I'm gonna do a bit of mascara because I think I like the eyes as they are and I'm actually gonna do brown. I'm gonna do a brown tubing mascara. I don't think it's necessary to do a black mascara on your wedding day. Um, not because I think it looks harsh at all. I'm all for it. I think it's just a nice time to like go for a softer eye and a more dreamy and a more romantic looking eye. And so I'm doing a brown mascara. This is something that's coming very soon from Rudy Berry. It might already be out. I think it drops on like the 14th. Um, it either drops on the 6th of Feb or the 14th of Feb. So there's just there's something like pretty and delicate about a brown, a sort of chocolate brown lash. Obviously, if you've got jet black eyelashes, though, you would probably just still go for black. Um, or I would even go for black and I would curl them 
and I well it depends it depends on how sort of what your uh, skin tone is behind the eyelashes like if you've got a nice sort of rich natural pigment behind the eyelashes then I would probably say go full for a big bold black eyelash to have contrast because that's all makeup is makeup is contrast always it's contrast in color okay we're getting we're getting somewhere we're getting somewhere I'm feeling a little bit more wedding as the day goes on I'm going to use a setting powder that I think would be perfect for a wedding. This is the CL Filter Protect SPF 30. This is a powder with SPF, so I don't actually know how this photographs in flash photography, uh, but I can only imagine they shot this product in flash photography when they developed it and, and it worked. It probably didn't bounce back, but Nikki, the founder of this brand, will be able to tell you more if you're considering this for your wedding powder. Um, but I can imagine that this is going to be the most gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous um powder for a wedding day because it photographs like a dream it makes your skin look like actual satin satin makes your skin look like satin i need another coffee i feel fatigued all right i forgot that i didn't put concealer on and i only went in with foundation but i actually i'm okay with that i might go in with it in a bit but i've powdered so i might not all right i want to add a tiny bit of powder blush now to boost my blush so once i've gone in with my powders now I can go in with my powders of other things. So my bronzer, for example, a little bit in the hairline to glow, a little bit over the bridge of the nose to glow, a little bit in the eye if you want to, just to connect, a little bit on the temples, down toward the blush, and then I might just shadow with it a little bit under there, but it's, this is one of my favorite bronzers. This is the Soft Revenge from Nabla in the shade Soft Revenge, it's called Skin Bronzing Powder. Uh, and then I'm gonna do a powder blush as well, and I'm gonna go with the Nabla, same formula, but the blush version. Um, and I'm gonna use uh, this brush that I powdered with, the Lola shade with this. Just a little, it's just the most gorgeous, delectable, like skin-like finish. As you can see, if you are a blush queen, you need these. Okay. I think I want a bit more pigment in the lip, so I am actually going to switch this out and go for something a little bit with a little bit more color. Even though this is pretty, I think I want just a little bit of something else. So I'm actually going to take the other new shade from Chanel, which is called Cocoon. Is that called Cocoon? Yeah, Cocoon 940. I'm going to add that to the mix because I think it needs to be a little bit more. That's better. Pretty. All right, I'm gonna be really sneaky and I'm gonna use a little bit of concealer, but I'm gonna be delicate and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be strategic about my application because I already did powder. So this is a Mario 180 concealer. It's called the um, Skin Surreal Skin Concealer, and I'm gonna take that first brush that I applied around my eyes and I'm gonna prime that brush into that concealer. So I'm thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly erasing that swatch patch of my concealer on my hand. It's in my skin but it's in the brush. And this now is gonna become that perfect amount to sort of go in and feather light apply a little bit of concealer, allowing for me to, you know, be precise, meticulous, and not have a bunch of product sitting on the surface of the skin that I have to blend. Um, and so it's good to sort of practice priming the brush with your product. And then I didn't move any of my powder around I also didn't apply loads of powder. I would never do this step if I had baked, but I don't bake. I'm not a baker. Um, I leave the baking for the chefs. <laughs> that was silly. But this step is like my favorite step typically because it allows for you to sort of refine everything a little bit and make everything a little bit more snatched, everything a little bit more sort of precise and a little bit more poppy. Uh, everything contrasts a little bit more. Um, I'm going to do, now that I've got a bit of blush on my face, I am going to do a little bit more powder. So again, it's always just a little bit of a game of give and take. Uh, a little touch of powder here. It's a game of give and take always with makeup for a day like this. And also just for makeup in general, if you want longevity and if you want sort of high performance. But my skin looks velvety and soft. It doesn't look heavy and cakey, but I know this is going to last. The only things that I would take with me in my makeup bag would be the lip product and the powder and the concealer. I wouldn't take anything else because I know I can use the lip product as a little bit of a cheek color if I need to in a pinch. I'm gonna use a tiny, tiny bit of Hyper Shine Highlight by KJH Brand. And I'm gonna use the tip of this brush and I'm just gonna point the tip of the brush into the pot 
and pick up a little bit of this completely neat no serum. I don't want serum because I don't want it to sort of potentially compromise anything. The serum used before makeup, kind of like how when I did my SPF step would have been the time that I would have used the serum, but I was already so dewy in the, there's not always a time and a place for putting highlighter before your makeup. Um, but this by itself, without any of the serum for a wedding day, literally you will be the most visible, the most visible person on those photographs as you should be if you're the bride. As you can see, it's just like a gorgeous pop of radiance and it makes you just look like you came from the most elegant facial of your life. All right, my last little step I lied is Freckles from Rudy Berry. This foundation is a tiny bit yellow for me, the one that I did all over my full face. Uh, so just in case you noticed that, I wanted to call attention to that so you didn't think I didn't know. I sort of just like to bring life back to the complex, back to the, the the freckles, so that they sort of have a visibility, almost like there is no foundation or complexion on the skin. And so that is it. That is what I would do if I was doing my own makeup for a wedding. If I was doing a bride for a wedding, and she was just like, "Do what you want. I want to look fle fresh and flashy." Um, it, it, even if I was doing bridesmaids, like I always just want to achieve a you but more radiant and glowy kind of vibe. So I hope this was helpful and drop any comments in the comments below.